Right, this is um <clears throat> these are my hands. This is um this is gonna be a bit more reflective, I think. It's gonna be a bit more um I don't know, I don't know what it's gonna be. <laughs> That's the joy of this uh channel that uh, we never know what, what we're going to do next. I like to, uh, yeah, I'm just going to start putting marks on this paper so that I don't just spend all my time introducing what I'm going to do. Um, there are times when I need to kind of relax a bit and deregulate my, whatever that means, my crazy head. And um, I, I first started doing this about 20 years ago when I was, um, I was doing a contract, uh, a kind of, interim management contract at an organization that doesn't exist anymore. It didn't exist much longer after I left. It was called the, Com uh, the Commission for Public and Patient Involvement in Health, I think. It might have been patient and public. Uh, CPPIH, snappy acronym um, and I, what it what it involved for me apart from the work <laughs> was it involved um, going and staying up in Birmingham two nights a week three nights a week sometimes I think it was like I did four night four days in the Birmingham office and um, one day supposedly in the London office but actually oh, I can't remember it was it was more than 20 years ago anyway while I was there uh, another I suppose another part of this story so this is because this is uh, 2000 the end of 2003 beginning of 2004 and the other part of that story is that um, uh, let's think uh, a couple of years before I started on that on doing that project um, I'd stopped drinking alcohol one day at a time and I was talking about myself as being sober because I wasn't drinking, but I, I wasn't very sober emotionally, psychologically. Uh, it's one of the things with kind of long term alcohol abuse is that it, yeah. It, um, well, it inhibits development, to put it in fairly posh sounding terms. What that means is you don't learn the lessons that you're supposed to learn because you avoid them by drinking booze. Uh, and there's a counterpoint to that, which is that you learn a bunch of lessons that you might otherwise never have needed to learn. Um, 
by drinking in that way. And and this isn't just about drinking. This is, in my experience, and lots of people I know, the experience of, you know, with lots of different forms of addiction. But my primary um, experience for this, and at that time, was around alcohol. And so, yeah, it it creates a an immaturity. It doesn't create an immaturity. It just means that you don't get any sort of oh, any sort of. Um, I just realised that the window cleaner's here. <laughs> that was a surprise. I could have just about hear him. You might just be able to hear him behind me. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, it doesn't create immaturity. It postpones maturity. And, um, yeah, why was I talking about that? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I was finding it tough. I think that I think the point I was trying to make was that for people who haven't drunk compulsively, people who haven't had a, an addictive relationship with alcohol or anything else, um, people who haven't tried to solve their the problems in their lives, which were initiated. By drinking alcohol and try to solve them by drinking more alcohol um, for people who don't have any of that experience it can appear that all you've got to do is stop drinking and you'll be a different person and, and that is true because the person that I was when I was drinking Especially when I was, you know, if you bumped into me in the pub, uh, was very different from the person that you would see uh, sitting at my desk or if you bumped into me during the day and I hadn't been to the pub for lunch. But it's not just about that kind of, you're a different person when you're sober. You're a different person when you don't have alcohol in your system. It's much more that you need to become yourself and you need to do the work. It takes work in order to uh, deal with the things that you've been avoiding. Or, you know, this, I can only speak for me. The things that I avo avoided Uh, by having a drink instead. Um, so yeah, there I was in Birmingham. And I remember, it, I think it was the... What's that hotel in town called? Um, begins with a B. It's the same as... Is it the Burlington? I was thinking it's the same as... an. Um, that arcade in Piccadilly, although there's, I think, also a Burlington Arcade in Birmingham. Um, yeah, I think I was there and I was struggling with keeping my mind off all the things that were wrong. Uh, I was because there are always things that are wrong somewhere in your life. It's very easy for, it was very certainly very easy for me at the time to get completely obsessed with the things that I saw were still wrong with my life, even though I wasn't drinking. And, you know, you can go to meetings and you can talk to people and you can do the work 
the exercises that you need to do in order to work through the stuff that's accumulated. You can do all of that, but then for me, being away from home, away from my family and having to do this job and deal with all of that and deal with it without the people around me that I knew and relied a bit on. Um, I mean, it was exciting. I enjoyed doing it and the work was rewarding. But there's still there's still just a, a bit missing when you're in that kind of state and and yeah so the thing that I the thing that I did is similar to what I'm just doing I'm doing right now I just sat I got I had basically I had some sheets of photocopier paper I probably pinched them from the office and I had some sharpies this isn't a sharpie this is more of a felt tip pen but um, it's not split hairs um, I had I had a couple of sharpies I think I I think I might have had some uh, you know pinpoint markers because I probably was doing some facilitation at the time as well um, and and one night I just thought well I'll just sit here and make marks on this paper until I feel well see what happens not with any idea of making anything that I would show anybody else or do more of just as a kind of fix really for how I was feeling then I just was drawn I was inspired to make some marks and I and I did, and I a lot of it was just you know quite angry actually, quite angry scribbling and making abstract shapes that represented what I was feeling or felt like they were a safe way of. Um, expressing what I was feeling and um, yeah so I ended up with I don't know 50 or so sheets of A4 with these black just black scribbles on them some some things that looked a bit more like they were things and some things that didn't and and then I don't know whether it was the same time or soon after I um I, I kind of I, I think I've picked up some felt tip pens and did the same kind of thing thinking well you know I don't know but I'll just let my hand take it where it will and this kind of form came out for me I think actually the first ones I mean I've got I've got the notebooks still I mean I basically what I did then was once I realized how I mean I I when I did the first lot with the black marker it it just it unlocked something uh, really useful and reminded me that there was you know there were other ways of dealing with feelings other than um, you know writing uh, non-verbal things um, at this point, I don't think I 
was making much music I kind of stopped which is also part of the, part of the problem but um, yeah there's, there's just something really powerful about letting something come out following a um, it's not really even it's not instructions because I made them up but following a form um, just making this line in the way that I made that first one in a wriggly kind of a way where it folded back on itself and then to alternate colours in lines outside round and round and round until it's finished whatever the finished things and I experimented with different colours and blah 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 you know um, experimented with making different shapes and you know doing them in and using different pens and it's all very interesting but actually sitting down and doing it is the process is the is the beneficial thing it's like not it's not about the inputs it's not about the outputs it's about the doing it's about the thing we the the state of being that we get into when we're actually doing this kind of activity putting everything else behind us Ignoring the window cleaner, who's gone now. Ignoring all of the bits of admin that I need to be doing. Ignoring the kind of uh, thinky thinky state that I've been in. Thinking about what I'm doing and wanting to express more the thinking behind the work that I'm doing and then getting tangled up in doing the work uh, and ending up not doing or doing doing the stuff that I want to be doing but in a way that is not satisfying it's not like this you know shooting of shooting a vlog and bringing it home and editing it down and uploading it to youtube is not of the same class of activity as this is i mean one of the cool things about it is that it contributed to me maintaining my sober streak my non-drinking streak which is now one day at a time um, 22 years 23 years in January um, and that's a good thing that's a good thing for me it's a good thing for everybody <laughs> anybody who ever came across me but um, Yeah. I think there's lots of misunderstanding. I mean, I don't know. Because I do because 
So I do know that one of the things I still suffer with is a belief that people don't understand what I'm doing. Oh, I don't know what's happened there. I think it's just, I think that was just the screensaver kicking in on my computer. Put me off. Uh, now I can't remember what I was saying. What do I know? The great thing about this kind of talking is that I can't remember and I've got no way of retrieving it. Well, I do have a way of retrieving it. I can stop the video. I can listen and then pick up my thread where I was, but what's the point? <laughs> I'm just rambling anyway. Been rambling for 20 minutes. I'll, prob I'll, I'll probably do another, I'll probably take it up to half an hour. Um, Uh, yeah. Oh, misunderstanding. Yeah, I know that I am. I I am vulnerable to feeling misunderstood. It's a kind of long term belief of mine that people don't, just don't understand what I'm talking about, what I do, who I am, what I mean. What I'm good at they just don't understand and um, and so this is where I was coming at it um, I'm aware that or I believe that people have a lot of mis people who haven't been directly involved in some sort of recovery from addiction don't really understand the things that you need to do in order to get well why would you unless you know somebody and you talk to them about it but there's a, what i mean is there's a kind of general <clears throat> a general um uh can't find a I want to say ignorance but it's it's just yeah but there is also one of the things that annoys me is not about individual people at all it well except in that everything's made by individuals ultimately but what what does get on my wick is seeing representations in the media um, of 12-step meetings or people in that kind of recovery. And I think the thing that is least well represented in those things is, um, is the individualism I suppose are the or the and the anarchy of um, an AA group or an AA meeting uh, and all that means really I, th I think then the other the other problem is of course that I don't think people understand anarchy either um, if only you were all as bright and brilliant and experienced as I am the world would be a much better place um, I what am I trying to say I think I've I think I've stumbled into something that I probably don't want to talk about <laughs> because uh, well I think that's always the case the reason is that um, 
there's always more to explain. It's hard, isn't it? Explaining stuff to people, explaining what you think to people. I mean, this is the issue I've had with my blog ever since I started it, which was, you know, coincidentally, <laughs> around the same time as I started doing this. Um, and yeah, it takes time and work to express something. Um, and the way that my brain works is that I find it quite difficult to stop going further down the rabbit hole or finding, you know, uh, making just one more point and, and the structure of what I've said today, for want of a better word, the structure has been, you know, ever more and more complicated and kind of the, the, the line kind of bifurcates, splits and I go off in another one direction. And so the tree of it, the tree of what I've said ends up being really complicated and I end up in, um, you know, at the end of some sort of branch and then need to pull myself back to what I was originally trying to talk about. But in the meantime, I I have said things that I wanted to say. The portrayal of those meetings, though, does get up my nose. I think... I think it's primarily because, um, and I may already have said, I think it's primarily because and about something for something else, but I do think it's about, um, yeah, the organization of recovery and how I think lots of people can't quite get their heads around how a bunch of drunks. I mean, this is what we all face when we start up, start on a recovery journey as well. But how can a bunch of people who, you know, whose core creed is that they're powerless over alcohol that they're powerless and their life has become unmanageable by them how can such a group of people come to um, organize something in a and and to do it in a different way then all sorts of other things are organised to do it in a non-hierarchical, mostly, um, much much flatter kind of approach. And how yeah how how does it work? And, and it, I can see that if you need to put this into a TV drama, you haven't got time to do that, to, to make it any, um, and if, you know, to make it so simple <laughs> or something. I don't know. There's a lot more to say about this. I've done half an hour and I, I think that needs to be enough. What an interesting ramble. I'm going to see where this takes me. I mean, it's an interesting ramble for me. For you, it's um, it's a kind of voicemail that doesn't get anywhere. 
but it's also a voicemail that does also contain the creation of some art and yeah and as I said earlier I don't think the art is this and I don't think that the art is this <laughs> the, the actual you know, the thing that's encased by this little window on the, my world the art is in whatever it is, the state that I am in, the state that I get into when I sit and do something as mindless and pointless. Because I'm probably going to just, I'm not going to do anything with this except, I'm not going to do anything with this except just kind of put it in a box uh, and Am I going to do anything with the video? I don't know. Maybe. You will know if I did do something with the video. Because you'll be listening to it. Hmm. Okay. That's that. <laughs>